estimated that more than 17 million Americans suffer from depression. And with cases on the rise due to the pandemic and economic downturn, most people are searching for relief and they know that it can be a long process of trial and error to find a medication that works. So today, information about the genetic test called GeneSight test that will help doctors find a solution faster and alleviate depression symptoms by using a patient's unique genetic makeup. Joining me with more information is psychiatric nurse practitioner, CEO and founder of Allay Health Team. It's Carmen Kosicek. Good morning to you, Carmen. Good morning, Tiffany. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining me. I'm so excited to talk about all of this, but I want to just start with talking about depression in general, because so many people have heard about depression on the rise with the pandemic. So what are you hearing and seeing when it comes to depression? Well, first of all, I think just to back up a little bit is that depression and anxiety coexist by at least 70%. So some people will feel more anxious where others actually feel a depression, where they're not wanting to engage or do things that they would normally do, kind of step back from their normal lives a little bit and just not really have the energy to do such things. So those are the patients that we're talking about here. So, so kind of lay it out for us. What are some of the symptoms that someone would be experiencing or feeling if they have depression? Um, it could be something as they can't fall asleep or stay asleep, that their depression or anxiety is keeping them up. It could be that they no longer want to cook when they used to love to cook, or they don't want to engage in normal activities. They just really don't have the energy that they want to do anything. They don't want to go to the grocery store. Or it could be you know, a stay-at-home parent that can get their hair and makeup done if they had to go to work, but if they're not going to work anymore, they're just unplugged and not engaging, and they're in their pajamas all day, and they never take the time anymore for self-care. It sounds like simple little things, but I know it can add up to be so much more. And I read the statistic that 49% of Wisconsin residents with a mental illness are not receiving care. And so when it comes to treating depression, what are you seeing as challenges to treating it? I think a lot of the challenges is that you have to address the nutritional component as well as if there's a need for pharmaceutical um, treatments. And a lot of the patients are not being seen by a psychiatric prescriber in Wisconsin. So a lot of the depression might be overlooked or um, not assessing which type of depression it is. There's a lot more to it. Then last thing that I see is where they hop from med to med to med. And the patients sadly think that every medication that they're going to try, there's another chance that they'll get better. When really we could streamline this, you should not get out of the park with one or two medications or you realize that you're on in the wrong class of medications. Yeah, that can be real disheartening, especially when you feel like, is this the magic pill? Is this going to make me feel better? So as, as a healthcare yeah. provider, is there something you can do to help reduce that, that trial and error? You know, it's interesting. I moved to Wisconsin four years ago and started my practice. And at that time, I looked at the information that came out of the, you know, the I went to the Cleveland Clinic, which is Case Western, so I always look at my competition, the Mayo Clinic, which many in Wisconsin are familiar with, and the federal government had taken the information from the Mayo Clinic, and it was utilizing and approving full coverage for Medicaid and Medicare pharmacogenomic testing through a company named GeneSight. So I've used that information from day one because if the federal government approves it and gives the blessing to pay for it, there's obviously some solid evidence behind it. And so I use pharmacogenomic testing when people have tried a med or two, or if they say, I'm not wanting to be the guinea pig, please help me. And it, it is not by any means the end all and be all. I look at it like Siri, that if I was down in Oak Creek and I needed to get up to Milwaukee, maybe Siri would tell me to hop on 94, but Siri also might say, don't get on there, there's a jackknife semi. So Siri kind of gives me a direction, but it doesn't always mean that Siri is correct. And it's the same with pharmacogenomic testing. I can use GeneSight, a little Q-tip swab in someone's mouth, to help guide and direct the choices of medications that I make. It's not the end all and be all, but it sure beats guessing. Well, that's pretty fascinating. I mean, so that test, the GeneSight test can then help you determine potentially why someone's genetic makeup didn't allow that medication to work as efficiently. Is that, is that what happens? <laughs> Yeah, what it does, Tiffany, is it will tell me, hey, for this medication on this particular patient due to their genetic makeup, they need more of a med, they need less of a med. This med isn't as likely to work as what the package insert has guided me for, for the FDA clinical trials. 
I might want to look at something different to have a faster or more robust outcome. So it just gives me direction, which I think is fantastic, instead of, you know, parlaying the care and wasting more time of helping to someone feel better with their depression and anxiety. I think it sounds uh, like there's a lot of hope. So I want to make sure everybody knows how to get the information for GeneSight. So thank you so much for joining me, Carmen. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Tiffany. You bet. And here's more information on GeneSight. Um, it must be ordered by a clinician who can prescribe medication. So if you don't have a doctor, you can visit GeneSight.com. You can also call the phone number, which is 866-260-2394 to learn more.